Welcome again. Now, in this lecture, we'll move on to assessing the diffuse alveolar pattern in a chest X-ray. So, as we've said before, if you see an opacification, lungs are more opaque than normal. So, the first question to ask yourself is whether it's focal or diffused. And if it's diffused, then is it reticular like a network of lines, alveolar or cloud-like opacities, or nodular pattern? And we've talked in details about the reticular pattern in the previous lecture, and now we'll move on to alveolar pattern. Now, opacities that are caused by airspace diseases have some characteristics. In other words, why would you say it tends to be more an airspace disease? First of all, airspace disease characteristically produce opacities in the lung, which can be described as fluffy, cloud-like, or hazy. And let's take this case for example to see these characteristics. Here, we can see clearly fluffy, cloud-like opacities which are greater in the right than the left. Another characteristic is that the margins are indistinct, meaning it's frequently difficult to identify a clear demarcation point between the disease and the adjacent normal lung. Also, airspace disease may contain air bronchograms or the silhouette sign. But what are these signs? Normally, bronchi aren't visible on X-ray because they contain air and they are surrounded by alveoli which are also full of air. And walls of bronchi are also very thin. But when something like fluid or soft tissue replaces the air normally surrounding the bronchus, then the air inside the bronchus becomes visible as a series of black branching tubular structures. And this is simply what is called the air bronchogram. As in this case, for example, where we can see a nice example of extensive air bronchograms in the left lung. Now for the silhouette sign. Normally, as you know, heart and lungs have different radiographic densities which give the heart and mediastinum a nice clear contour. Now the silhouette sign occurs when two objects of the same radiographic density, such as water and soft tissue, touch each other so that the edge or margin between them disappears and it will be impossible to tell where one object begins and the other ends. Now let's say this is some lesion surrounded by lung tissue which makes us able to see its borders clearly. Now what happens if the same lesion is located here? Now either the borders of the lesion or the heart are clear. So basically, silhouette sign is somewhat of misnomer and it's actually the loss of the silhouette. And this is an example of silhouette sign. In this case, the patient had pneumonia in the right middle lobe which caused silhouette sign to appear on the right border of the heart. Now we know how alveolar diseases appear on chest X-ray, but why this happened in the first place? What can fill air spaces besides air and why? First, it can be fluid, as in pulmonary edema. It can be blood, as in pulmonary hemorrhage. It can be inflammatory exudate, as in pneumonia. Maybe gastric juices, as in aspiration. Or maybe just water, as in near drowning cases. Now let's take some examples. If you remember from the previous lecture, where the left ventricle is unable to pump sufficiently so fluid starts to accumulate abnormally in the extravascular compartments of the lung, first in the interstitium causing interstitial pulmonary edema, then if fluid continue to accumulate in the lungs, interstitial edema will become alveolar edema and we'll see fluffy, cloud-like and hazy opacities. Like in this case, in which we see both cloud-like opacities and reticular opacities. So there are alveolar and interstitial edema features. We can also recognize very high opacities or bat wings as in the previous lecture, besides enlarged cardiac silhouette and left pleural effusion as we can see an opacity in the left costophrenic angle. Now let's say that a 50 year old woman came to you complaining of productive cough, fever and malaise that started 7 days ago. On examination, diffuse inspiratory crackles are heard bilaterally and her six R shows diffuse bilateral batchy consolidation. And finally, her leukocyte count is 14,000. Now, these findings are typical for bronchopneumonia, which shows poorly defined batchy infiltrates scattered throughout the lungs on CXR. Now, another thing which can fill the air spaces is blood leading to airspace opacification. Pulmonary hemorrhage is a broad term to describe any form of bleeding into the lung and can arise from a myriad of causes. In a very traditional sense, it's described when the following constellation of clinical radiological features occur simultaneously, 
Although this is never an absolute necessity, hemoptysis, anemia, and airspace opacities on imaging, like this case here, in which a 45-year-old male who has a non-diagnosis of good pasture syndrome and his 6R shows diffuse bilateral airspace opacification due to alveolar hemorrhage. Now a rare but very characteristic cause of diffused alveolar opacities, which is pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. It's a rare lung disorder characterized by abnormal accumulation of surfactant-derived lipoprotein compounds within the alveoli of the lung. Let's take this X-ray as an example, which is for a 35-year-old male who presented with shortness of breath for the past five days. You do a high-resolution CT for the patient, and you find two main features characterize the appearance of pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. First, smooth thickening of interlobular and intralobular septal lines and ground glass opacities. The combination of these two features is termed crazy bathing pattern. And here's what real crazy bathing looks like, as this irregular shape bathing stones looks like this linear pattern superimposed on a background of ground glass opacity. That's a fantastic analogy, right? So let's recap. Characteristic of airspace disease are fluffy cloud-like and hazy opacities, fuzzy and indistinct margins, and sometimes you can see air bronchograms or silhouette sign. And causes of airspace diseases can be pulmonary edema, pneumonia where alveoli are filled with inflammatory exudate, diffused alveolar hemorrhage, or rarely pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. Now, we are done with reticular and alveolar patterns, and in the next lecture, we'll move on to nodular patterns.